Hello friends, happy Wednesday. I am posting the video today because it is a holiday for me at work on Friday. So, today we will be finishing Skeletons Don't Play Tubas from the Adventures of the Bailey School Kids series. We have chapter 12 and 13 left, but they are both pretty short. So before we go over our questions from Monday, we are going to do our Kids on Course motto, so repeat after me. I am smart. I believe in myself. I am a great kid. I have courage. I deserve to learn. Today is going to be awesome! Alrighty, and of course it is because we are finishing our book. So, you had three questions on Monday. Question one. What necklaces did the Bailey School Kids wear? And the Bailey School Kids wore jack-o'-lantern necklaces. Question two, why did they wear those necklaces? They wore them because it is believed that jack-o'-lanterns ward off evil spirits, which they think Claude is evil, so that's why they wore them. And question three, do you think their necklaces worked? And while the students were wearing them, there wasn't any tuba music playing, but as soon as they came off, there was. So, I will leave that answer up to you. Now, since we are finishing the chapter, I only have a few questions for you, and they are discussion questions. So, discuss whether the inferences or ideas that you thought of how the book would end were correct, or if some were correct, discuss those, or you can also discuss how your ideas of how the book would end were different than it actually does end. And the other question that I would like you to discuss was whether or not you enjoyed this book. So did you like reading it or did you not like reading it? Alrighty, now let's get into chapter 12 and then 13. Now what are we going to do? Liza moaned at the lunch table. The fall festival is less than an hour away and we don't have our jack-o'-lanterns. Mrs. Jeeper locked them in her drawer. Maybe we can make some more, Howie suggested. There's no time, Liza whimpered. Eddie shot his straw wrapper at Howie. If Bonehead here hadn't been showing off, we'd have been okay. We have nothing to worry about, Melody defended Howie. After all, it's been quiet all day. Eddie looked hopeful. Maybe old Claude, with, Claude without a bod knows we're on to him and decided to keep his mouth shut. The kids nodded and bit into their pizza slices without another thought to skeleton bones, alive or dead. But as they lined up to go to the festival, Claude was on their minds again. Long, sad tuba notes echoed down the halls of Bailey Elementary. Oh no, Liza cried. It's Claude, just in time for the festival. The kids had no choice but to file into the gymnasium behind Mrs. Jeepers. There, sitting on the stage for everyone to see, was Claude. He was holding the tuba, and he was smiling. Mrs. Jeepers turned to her students and smiled. Good luck, ladies and gentlemen. You are the first to perform. You may go on the stage now. Liza shook her head and hid behind Melody. There's no way I'm going on that stage. Mrs. Jeepers smiled her strange little half-smile. No need to be afraid. Everyone has had stage fright from time to time. Let me help you. She grabbed Liza's hand and pulled her up onto the stage with the rest of the class following. Mrs. Jeepers sat Liza right in front of Claude and patted her on the shoulder. I think my nose is going to bleed, Liza whined. And you can see Mrs. Jeepers is pulling Liza up onto the stage, and Claude is there holding the tuba. Do not worry, Mrs. Jeepers said as she stepped to the side of the stage. You will do fine. Mr. Belgrave stood in front of the class and tapped his conductor's baton on a music stand. The students picked up their instruments and began playing a Bailey Elementary march. The students played their best, and Mr. Belgrave smiled a big, yellow-toothed smile. Halfway through the song, low, sad notes came from behind Liza's chair. Liza gulped and almost dropped her saxophone. When the song was over, everyone in the audience clapped and cheered. Mrs. Jeepers smiled her odd little half-smile and nodded. Liza smiled back and bowed with the rest of the class. Then, very slowly, she turned to look behind her. What she saw almost made her faint. Instead of one bald head behind Liza, there were two. One belonged to Claude, and the other one belonged to Principal Davis. Both of them were smiling, but now Principal Davis had the tuba wrapped around him. 
How did you like my surprise? Principal Davis asked Liza. I bet you didn't know your old principal could toot a horn. Liza shook her head with relief, but Eddie, Eddie stepped up beside her. I knew it was you playing the tuba all along, Eddie bragged. You did not. Melody put her hands on her hips and looked at Eddie. You thought Claude was playing. Eddie's face turned bright red to match his hair. I did not, he lied. After all, skeletons don't play tubas. Mrs. Sheepers came up beside Eddie. I did not know you were so interested in skeletons, she told him. You will be delighted with our new science unit. Eddie shook his head. Science has never delighted me before. Mrs. Jeepers touched her green brooch and smiled. You will like this, she said with certainty. What will we be studying? Molly asked. The human skeleton, Mrs. Jeepers said. Eddie didn't say anything, as everyone around him laughed, but he gulped when he thought he saw Claude wink at him. And we have one last picture. You can see Principal Davis talking to the Bailey school kids and Claude is back there. That is the end of Skeletons Don't Play Tubas. So remember, you're going to discuss whether your ideas about the end of the book were correct, or if some of them were, talk about those. You can also discuss how your ideas were different from what the book actually ended, and then you will discuss whether you liked or did not like this book. Now, we will be starting a new book on Monday, so if you have any ideas or suggestions for what you would like me to read, have your parents send me an email, and I would be happy to do that. Everybody, have a great Wednesday, and enjoy the 4th of July this weekend. Bye!